Hey y'all, it's Betsy from Happily Ever After, etc. And we are back on day four of our European tour cruise trip. And we are actually right outside of Dover. It's been a crazy morning, so I didn't get a chance to pop on and talk this morning, but we left bright and early from London. We caught a transfer to Dover and we are at a pit stop right now. I will put some footage of this place. It's beautiful. But we're almost to Dover where we will be catching the ship and then starting our cruise. But a little pit stop, check out some of the white cliffs and get some water and then back on back on the bus. It was very interesting how they got us on the bus. So we had a shuttle car that came down that held six people. So me and mom, our luggage, and then two other couples, one from California and Arizona, and one from right next to us in Georgia. Heard that y'all, and I was like, oh, I know where y'all are from. And uh, they drove us to the bigger bus where we got on, we went to other people. So now we're just driving down to Dover to catch the ship. And uh, yeah, they're gonna stop at Dover Castle. I guess a couple of the people on the bus have a excursion there. I do think we'll see it, but we're not going inside. So let's go. Flintstone, if you remember the cartoon series, that's what they were quarrying out in the Flintstone. We are mentioning that we're driving on into Dover. And this is for focusing down there that we just came in here to go to Dover. So what is it that we're at right now? Capel the Fern. Capel the Fern. Yeah. Uh, Chapel in the Ferns. Okay. Basically in French. And that's France all the way over there? Yeah, that's France over there. Let's see if we can't get a view out here. So our tour guide that was just talking, um, taking, the sh taking a shuttle from London down to the cruise port, he's been telling us all kinds of information. He said, we'll see the White Cliffs of Dover really good once we get on the ship, but you can kind of start to see them from here. We're right outside of Dover. Oh, so it's a little, little marker here. Freddie Taylor, 26th of April, 1996 to June 11th, 2020. Loved, missed, never forgotten. Son, brother, friend to many. Lit up all of our lives. It's nice. Not sure why it's here, but it's nice. Look at the road at the bottom of those cliffs, man. Ooh. All right, well, we're only here for a quick pit stop, so I guess I better walk back, but it's just so pretty. Let's go. So this is where the little museum is and the cafe. Little wire hair dogs, because they're everywhere. <laughs> Here's the wall. It's some kind of memorial. Definitely interesting. There's so much history here. It is hard to keep it all straight. But you know, he said there was a battle fought here, and that the people were memorialized on the wall. 
Not exactly sure which battle though. And we didn't have enough time to stop to go to the museum. So just walked down to the cliffs. Here's mom. Did you get what you needed? Doing a penny. We always did those. I kind of wanted one too. Do we have enough stuff to do too? Let's find out. It says it's contactless, so we're gonna try tapping our card and see what happens. Do you need to select which one you need want first? Can you spin the wheel? Yeah, go ahead and spin it to the one you want. Okay, tap your card. I don't know if it works. He'll tell us. It's not working. Uh, so if you do it manually, if you've got cash, uh, we can take it as cash. It's £1.50 per penny. Yeah. Sure. Or if you've got three pounds, we'll obviously pop it into the... Um, sorry, if you've got three pounds, we can take it electronically. Yeah. I'll do that. I'll go grab the keys. I'll go. Yes, please. I have enough. 150? Yeah, 150, 150 is three. We're going to get our pennies. I don't even know if they're pennies because, you know, they don't do pennies here. Like, pennies is an American thing, so I imagine it'll be a British coin of some kind, right? I don't know. Let's give him a second. Mom's gonna do it. It's gonna get hard a little bit and then it'll get easier. We used to do these all the time growing up. Aha! Which one did you get, Mom? I think I got um, that one. Sure. Honestly, I would, yeah, that's the one to go for. The Battle of Britain Memorial flight, they're going to be over today. You went too far. Oh. No, no, that's it. Oh. Keep going. You got another. So gotcha. Time. So it's got to be perfectly lined up. Yeah. A little bit more, a little bit more. Beautifully done, madam. <laughs> You're a pro. Like an expert. There we go. Keep going now. I'll leave you to it. He didn't actually take the pouch. I guess I'll just go give them to him. All right, show us the pennies. Oh yeah, I like them. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Thank you for your help. Got our pennies back to the bus. You sure you didn't need any water? You have water. I already drank my drink and I accidentally bought sparkling water this morning, so I needed still water. All right. It's a pretty full coach, but it's not 100% full. And I'll tell you, the way they drive these things, I couldn't back this baby up. Definitely not without hitting something, that's for sure. All right, now we gotta go to Dover and then on to the ship. So this is the port of Dover that we're coming to now. Our busiest port for roll-on, roll-off ferries. Not quite as busy on freight as some of our other ports. Although one of them I was reading about the other day, one of our largest ports, there's going to be a strike there for the next eight days, one of our big container ports, so we may have even more problems with the supply chain than we've had since COVID. So we'll just see what happens. Now, if you look to the right hand side in a moment, just past this white truck, you will actually see your ship there on the right hand side. So two ships in today, yours is the farthest one away. Well, still. Not sure which the closest one is. We shall be passing both of them, well, passing one of them to get to yours. 
it's been docking here all summer, so I think this is the third group I've brought down to it. And I also brought up uh, down a group who was staying overnight in a hotel a couple of weeks ago, and then the next morning brought up a group who've been on it, and they were all very happy with it. So hopefully you guys will all have a good time. And now if you look ahead of the coach, just above that ridge, come into view again in a moment. That's the fantastic Dover Castle, one of the largest fortresses in this country. It's not quite as big as Windsor Castle. Windsor Castle is the largest inhabited castle in the world. There's been history here much, much longer than Windsor. You see the central keep to the left hand side with a little flag flying. That was mainly rebuilt for King Henry II. I'll come back to that in a moment. But if you look into the middle of the complex, you can see two stumpier buildings. The one on the right is St. Mary in Castro, the Saxon garrison church. So that dates back to the 700s. But then on the left hand of the middle two buildings, another stumpy building, it's about half the height now than it would have been in its heyday, is the Pharos Lighthouse. And it's the tallest Roman structure still standing in this country one of three lighthouses that survived in Northern Europe. And that's actually survived because the church later used it as a bell tower. So they preserved it using it as a bell tower. So this fortress has been used back to the ancient Britons. The ancient Britons actually originally uh, saw off the Romans. The Romans landed further up the country, but then they came and built their own lighthouse here and their own fort. Then the Saxons inhabited it. Then later the Normans, as I say, Henry II, after the unfortunate slaughter of Thomas of Becket on the altar of Canterbury Cathedral. So the story goes, Becket and Henry II were regularly falling out. Becket was the Archbishop of Canterbury that Henry II had engineered his appointment, hoping he could control him. They'd been close friends, Becket had been one of Henry's closest advisors and chief minister, that Becky was his own man and he refused to bow down to the king. So he went into exile for a little while, but when he came back, the king was still in disagreement with him and is reputed to have said, who will rid me of this troublesome priest? And four of his knights took him at his word, sailed over from where the court was sitting in Northern France at the time, in Normandy, rode up from Dover, where we are now, up to Canterbury, tried to reason with Becket and bring him out of the cathedral, but he refused. So they actually slaughtered him on the altar. That led to uh, Henry II seeking penance, and supposedly carried out a barefoot pilgrimage down to Canterbury Cathedral. And to show his penance to the people on the continent, particularly those coming over to the shrine of Becket, he remodeled, he used, uh, what's the word, the castle, to you sort of also show off his power and his wealth to some extent. So a bit of it was an ego trip as well as the penance side of things. Then shortly after, the castle was besieged by the French. The heir to the French throne, the Dauphin, besieged the rear of the castle. So they built some medieval tunnels at the rear. So those of you going in, you can have a look at those. And then it carried on being used all the way throughout history, particularly during the Napoleonic era when they extended lots of tunnels and built those barracks that you may have seen on the right hand side because we were worried that Napoleon and the French armies were going to invade over here. Then, later on, during the Second World War, they built secret wartime tunnels underneath and down into the cliffs. And you can actually see windows and galleries set into the cliffs. If you're looking at it, when you're looking back from your ship tonight, as you sail out and look back at the cliffs and the castle, and there are staff live on site now, but it's not continuously garrisoned. So it was the longest 
continuously garrisoned castle anywhere in the world, apparently. But nowadays, back behind, if you look, you might get a view as you're sailing out of some big uh, telegraph masts and stuff like that. You're listening. It is used as a listening post just back behind us. But during the Second World War, as well as the secret wartime tunnels and the secret hospital, it was also used as an admiralty lookout, lookout for the proper planes. And also, it's where they masterminded and carried out the uh, evacuation of Dunkirk. So I saw the film that was out a couple of years ago. Right, so we're going to pull into the coach park now. So those guys that have paid to come into the castle, if you'd like to jump off first, and then while I'm walking you around down to the castle, the other guys can jump off and take a quick photo opportunity. Please don't wander far away, because we want to get you down to your ship as quick as we can. But those guys who are going into the castle, you sort of jump off and follow me down. If you're unsure if you've booked into the castle, just check with me when you get off. Alright, so there's the castle. You can see the cruise ship in the background, which is kind of fun. But a lot of people have been walking, we're just taking a little break. The people are going to the castle. Mom and I are just going to go to the ship. But let's see if we can't get a better picture right over here. And then we gotta get back on the coach. Oh uh, yeah, without that berm in the way, it's a much better shot down here. We kind of wanted to go, but they're having to walk all the way down and back up. And Mom and I decided we can't walk that much. All right, we'll get our picture and we'll go back. <laughs> That's pretty cool. And I believe you could see the ship over here, but I don't think you can right now. Must be further down. All right, I'll let you know when we get there. We're almost at the ship, Mom. Mm. You excited? Yeah. I know. I was glad we got here a couple days early, but then it, it just felt like we got here really early. But yeah, we've had this booked for two years. So. Uber or something, yeah. We want to go get some Diet Coke for the trip. <laughs> We couldn't find anything in London that wasn't like a, just one, at a just one at a time, one and done. Like I need some for a whole week. Okay, so we got our bags, our little bags, our big bags, the porters are gonna take, but tell them about our room, mom. Our rooms are behind these, these lifeboats. Um, life and they're interior rooms, but they have floor to ceiling windows. So they're obscured a bit by the lifeboats, but mom got us some, yeah. But it's still floor to ceiling it's windows, light. it's light, and it's the same rate as an interior room, so. So we'll have a little bit of extra space, which is great because we're gonna be on the ship for 21 days. All right, mom, you ready to roll? Wait, do we wanna ask about the Diet Coke or we just wanna not worry about it? Let's just ask, because if he says no, then we know not to worry about it even. All right, we'll see y'all on the ship. We're on the ship by our cabin. We're in 4139 for the next 21 days. Yes, and so mom is a crazy, crazy cruiser, which they also call platinum. So 
she gets her keys right away when she gets on. I'm almost platinum. I'll be platinum after Maybe on, this next cruise. on our next cruise. Yeah. All right, so let's go and we're going to check out the room before we junk it up. We do try not to junk it up, but let's be honest. It will. After 21 days, everything's junked up. <laughs> oh, it is nice. So we've got a little couch. That'll be good for working on. Yep. And we've got both our beds. We've got an entire shrimp mirror. Hey, y'all. Sure. And then let's see, usually there is, yep, a mini fridge in here. So this is where you put your Diet Coke. Of course we don't have any. We don't have any since we're in Europe. Of course you've got your closets and the smallest bathroom in the world is always one on a cruise ship or in a camper. So if we're going into town or something, we sometimes will put our important stuff in there. And let's check out these windows. This is the best thing about these rooms. Yes. They are so good. And we have a teeny tiny little view. Right here. Right there. Bring it back there so we can show them all the windows. A teeny tiny little view. So we're not actually going to see anything. That's okay. We weren't ever planning to see anything. But when you're in a small room, in an interior, days, this is a lot of natural light, where yes. at least we can maybe I'll see the ocean. Yeah. Through this bar right here. Yes. And uh, and it's a lot of natural light instead of being in a dark box. Yes. But the main point is that and the room is bigger because of the blocked view. The rate is the same as an interior. We don't pay any more for these, and the room is bigger. We get a couch instead yes. of. The standard interior regular so interiors don't mom knows all the ever have any to get couches the best rates for each room so we are going to go up to lido i think and get some lunch because it's 12 30. Yes. we'll be hungry and we'll see i may give y'all a tour of the ship later today or we may wait till tonight i'm not sure okay all right let's go All right, so we've been on the ship for a while. We actually went and got everything set up in our room and we um, we ate lunch at Guy's Burgers, which is my favorite place to eat lunch on the ship. We have great burgers. And now we are sailing away in what, an hour, Mom? Mm -hmm. In an hour. So we wanted to come see, of course, the famous White Cliffs of Dover. And you can see Dover Castle where the coach was earlier. So you can actually see it really good from here. So maybe tomorrow um, or tonight when it's a little less busy, we'll do a full kind of tour of the ship. It's just pandemonium right now with everyone trying to figure out where they go and what to do and which elevators are working and which elevators are tagged for luggage. But it's a pretty ship. This is what would you say, Mom? Like a mid-sized ship? Um, it's kind of uh, not the smallest. It's like eighty-eight thousand gross tons. So which is the smallest ship for Carnival? Seventy, seventy-seven. And the biggest, of course, is the Mardi Gras. Mardi Gras is one hundred thirty-five thousand gross tons. So Mardi Gras is almost double this size, but not quite. Yeah. So, so far it's really pretty. It's definitely one of the older ships. You can tell when you look around, you know, a lot of the things inside are very ornate, very fancy, lots of 
carved mermaids yeah. everywhere. It's very ornate. Yes. So. So we have dinner, what, at six o'clock? Six o'clock. Are we on your time dining or are we on early or late? I, I think we're on early. We typically like to do early, but mom can't wait for late for sure. So if we can't get early, we try to do your time. So we'll go to dinner and then the welcome, yeah, welcome aboard shows after that. 9 45. So we'll see if mom stays up that late. We may not make that. That's he may have to go do something else. So we will uh, we'll see how much of this we bring y'all along for. But we are actually on the ship. Today was an interesting day because we mainly just drove from London to Dover and then got on the ship. But that's okay. Now we're here. We made it. Everybody's safe. That was the goal. We were so worried we were going to come to Europe, be in London for three days, and then not be able to get on the ship for some reason. So. Wow. I had to test for COVID. Everybody yes. has to test for COVID. Well, and y'all know I was sick, what, two weeks ago, three weeks ago? So it was awful. You don't have to test because of that. I didn't have to test because I've been cleared by my doctor since then, but mom had to test. Yes. And we had to travel all the way here. I mean, we flew on three planes. We went through three or four different airports. Not to mention we've been in London for three days. Three days. And I just want to wear a mask and not touch anything. She hates. So, better safe than sorry. What would you have said if we got to the, sh the port oh, and they wouldn't let you on the I ship? I would not have been happy if I would have been very mad. Out. So, Horrible. but we're wearing our shirts. These are the shirts I just made with Cricut. So I'll link to that down below. But I, <laughs> it's because we're in Europe. Mom and I typically cruise in the Caribbean where there's a lot of family reunions or family bashes where people all wear matching shirts. And there's been a couple here, but so far everyone has remarked on our matching shirts that say European vacation on them. So, but if you want to make one, I'll leave the link down below. We're going to go check out where we're eating dinner because that's coming up next. And then we'll go to the show. Okay, so before we go back to the room, I wanted to tell y'all that I got bottomless bubbles on this trip. So we only had a drink package one other time and we had the full drink package where you could get Anything. pina coladas, Mai Tais, whatever you wanted. Yeah. Mom got way too many drinks. Fancy coffee. Yeah, milkshakes, milkshakes, whatever you want. Yeah. I don't drink, so I had lots of virgin pina coladas, and the people at our table got lots of drinks. They yes. loved it, because our waiters were like Here, convinced more. that I, I was more. wasting I my drink package, and they just kept bringing me drinks that I wouldn't drink, so we would just hand them out. But um, I got bubbles this time, because in Europe, yes. in London especially, it is very hard to find 12 packs of soda and I don't drink coffee. I drink Diet Coke, which y'all probably know because I always have one. So I got bottomless bubbles and we're going to just, we're on the ship for two cruises. 21 days. Yes. So we're going to try to stock up sodas on this, this leg of the cruise so that maybe next leg of the cruise, I can skip bottomless bubbles and just drink my stockpile Diet Coke. Pepsi. Diet Pepsi. Pepsi. They got they got rid of Diet Coke. It was very sad. <laughs> oh wow. Okay, now we're going to dinner. All right, y'all. So obviously we are not still up on the promenade deck. We are back in our room. It is actually the next day. So after we left y'all, we went to dinner and we went to the welcome aboard show. We also kind of just walked around and looked at everything, but it was so crowded that videoing things was a little hard. And it's also you know, I don't know, maybe I'll bring y'all to dinner one night and show you kind of our table, but you don't really want to film people at dinner. That's not everyone's cup of tea. I know I don't like to be filmed when I'm eating. So first day, embarkation day, we actually got on the ship really easily. And um, then it was easy enough to find our room and go to dinner and everything. Even though there's a not a lot going on on the first day of a cruise, it's always just kind of hectic till you get in your own space and you unpack and we unpack everything because so we're going to be here for 21 days. So I hope you liked this video. If you've never been on a cruise, it's kind of a look into what it would be like, but I'm going to keep showing you shots from every day. Tomorrow, today is a sea day. So we're just on the ship all day and I'm not hundred percent sure how much of that I'm going to vlog every single day, but maybe I'll just do a sea day video at some point. So if you like this video, I will see you in the next one. Tomorrow, we are going to Copenhagen, right, Mom? Yep. So, we will see y'all in Copenhagen. Bye.